Hey guys and welcome back to the second half of the season. That's right, we're back and we are going to get things started right. We're going to the absolute mecca of motorsport in Australia. We're going to the home of everything petrolhead related. We are going to Mount Panorama Bathurst and we are going to be in the Group 3 cars. This is the first chance for the teams to check out the new cars for the second half of the season and the privateers are going to test out their new whips as well. It's time to get things started. It's time to get a hot lap in. This is all going to be proudly brought to you by Hybrid Ag again. And Corbin is going to do the honours and take us for a lap around the mecca of motorsport in Australia, Mount Panorama Bathurst. Take it away, Corbin. Thanks, Viper, and welcome to my wheel-to-wheel -wheel hot lap. Uh, Bathurst is a very tricky track, so it's very important to try and keep the car in a straight line. And I'll point out the couple mistakes I made in this lap, just to help everybody know the common mistakes you can make around Bathurst. So coming into turn one, usually about maybe 75, 80 metres break, turn in, try and just nick the kerb, nick the kerb on exit, try and avoid the grass, that's minor mistake number one. Uh, key is to really get on the power nice and early, you've got a mountain straight, there's a long straight that you can lose a lot of time on, so it's important to just, you know, get, get good speed. Um, coming into turn two, I think the key is to be braking along this concrete access way along here um, if your car pulls up really well you can do it later if your car doesn't pull up really well pull it a bit earlier it's i broke a little too late here but managed to recover pretty well taking the wide line hitting the curb important to hit the curb on the outside it can straighten up the car really well and really launch you towards the cutting and the cutting i like to coast around steady the car up bring it in bit squirrely on exit but that's all right um, into the Fujitsu sections I if you do it really well you can do it flat but if not a little quick lift will do the job here yeah, very quick lift really out you have to maximize the whole road and along here you want to start as far off to the right as you can afford just so you can carry as much speed I did a, again half lift here um, you can do that flat, same with the Fujitsu section, it is just quite difficult. Coming up here to the top, do a big lift, quick shift down just so I can bring it out towards the kerb and maximise the speed. If you go over it, it's really easy to spin or just lose a lot of time and it's the kind of time you can't afford to be losing. You can lose many seconds. Um, so that's bad. Coming down over Skyline, really get as close as you can to the walls you want to hit that curb on the left here yeah, maybe a little too deep but is able to get it nice turned up uh, at the dipper there um, if your car is fully over to the left of that white line you will get a track limit penalty i don't agree with this but it's just how the game is built so that's the key one you really gotta be mindful of that and i'm someone who tries to maximize as much road as I can so I fall foul of that quite often. Coming into Forest Elbow I like to really get a nice line through here, bring it here. This is where I usually shift down and right around where that blue that you know the blue fence starts is when I'll start to hop off the gas, hop onto the brakes, shift it down to the first, get it nice and turned in, bring it out to the wall. A little too much too much beans on exit but that's quite alright we can live with that um, again another very important exit you know um, Conrad straights are very long straights so it's really easy to lose a lot of time um, coming into the chase um, keys probably to break again probably 125 130 135 um, too too late and you're just off the track too early you're gonna hit the kerb which isn't really too good I had a little too much kerb here which unsettles the car hitting that kerb there is important so the ideal line through there is just touch 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 you just want to get a little bit of kerb on each of them too much and it'll hurt coming into the final corner again braking just after the hundred so it's, this is for here it's probably 80 meters onto the brakes again touch touch and you're on the race to the line 
not a fantastic lap, but it's a lap nonetheless that I can show a little bit of insight into. Thanks, Viper, and back to you. Thanks for that, Corbin. What a great lap. It's fantastic that the uh, Div 1 drivers are all giving up some time to show us the way around this fantastic track. This track means so much to the motorsport community within Australia, and it is revered around the world as one of the most prestigious and technical tracks uh, to get a car around. So let's talk about the races this week. We have three races. We have two seven lap races and a 13 lap race. Now the tire requirements for these races are a little bit more traditional. Soft laps will be done in the first race. So only soft tires available, seven laps. Now this can be a problem for some cars, but not all cars are gonna be that adversely affected. Hard tires only for the second race. So this one's gonna be a little bit slower, but uh, it's definitely gonna favor the tire, favor the cars in the second race that have had uh, trouble with the longevity of the tires in the uh, in the first race. So it's probably gonna even things out a little. Softs and mediums will both be available for the third race and they will both be compulsory. So definitely a pit stop's gonna be happening there, which is gonna open up fuel strategy. It's also gonna open up tire strategy. So it could be three stops, could be one stop, could be two stops, who knows? Some people are going to work out the fastest way around this place and they're going to make a strategy that works. Qualification for this week. We have one 10 minute quali for the first race, a hot lap quali for the second race, and then a reverse grid of the second race results for the third race. So back to more of a traditional uh, wheel to wheel qualification setup for this week. And uh, we are definitely looking forward to this race. A lot of guys have earmarked this one on the calendar for a good result. Everyone's done a lot of laps around here. Everyone knows the track really well. Some guys love it. Some guys absolutely love it. And some guys, ironically, really hate it. So uh, just let us know which one you are. Um, and uh, we're all, all looking forward to this race. We're all itching to get back on the track. It's been a great break. It's been a great Easter. And we uh, hope everyone's been happy and safe. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all guys back on the live stream. So you know what to do. You know where to find it. It's going to be so it's going to be 5.30, but not daylight saving time this time, normal time. And it's uh, 5.30 on our YouTube channel, 5.30 on our Facebook. You guys know where to find it. You guys know what to do. Tune in, get ready for it. We're going to go wheel to wheel. You're going to love it. I'm going to love it. I can't wait for it. Let's go. Let's go.